What's up everybody, how we doing? We're back with some more good old Mr. Ballin. This is a disaster that you've never heard of that's still controlling our timeline. Let's check it out. One night in 1944, an American military pilot was flying over England when he turned around in his cockpit and looked at this panel of switches that was right behind him. And after looking for a particular switch, he reached out and he was about to toggle it, but he stopped because he knew what he was about to do, flipping the switch, would easily be the most dangerous thing he had ever done in his entire life. But this was his duty, he had to do it. And so after taking a deep breath, uh -oh. he flipped the switch. And immediately chaos ensued and the course of American history would be drastically changed forever. If you've never heard the story Wait. before, and many people have not, this is not nearly as well known bomb? as it should be, then you are in for a huge reveal at the end. Because he but sounds like he dropped the bomb. That story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you come know. to the right place because that's all we do and we upload once a week. So, if that's of interest to you, please secretly log in to the like button's computer and then transfer all of their Bitcoin to your untraceable offshore account. Okay, also, no. please subscribe to that's our channel something and I can get behind. notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. Okay, let's get into today's story. Wires crossed. I wish I had some Bitcoin though, that'd be dope. At around 5.30 p.m. on the evening of August 12th, 1944, a young American military pilot named Joe walked out of his quarters on his base in England where he was stationed. And as soon as he was outside, he lit a cigarette to calm his nerves. And as he smoked the cigarette, he began walking towards the huge hangar on the other side of the base where his plane was waiting for him. Okay. Joe had been preparing for this night for weeks. He and his co-pilot, a 35-year-old lieutenant who was nicknamed Bud, were about to step off on a top secret military mission called Operation Aphrodite. And this mission was not only top Aphrodite. secret, but it was so unbelievably dangerous that basically anybody who knew about it considered it a suicide mission. Mm. But Joe tried not to think about that as he walked towards the hangar. Hard Instead, not to think he about tried it. To think about the reason he was here in the first place, the reason he had joined the military, and that was to defeat the Nazis. And what he and his co-pilot were about to do, Operation Aphrodite, was going to play a huge role in defeating the Nazis. Hmm. So this was about five years into World War II, and at this point, the Nazis were actually losing. However, it was making them more dangerous, not less, because they were becoming very, very desperate. And so they were launching uh. all these outrageous attacks, basically because they had nothing to lose. And one horrible thing the Nazis were doing at this time were dropping these things called vengeance weapons. Hitler called them vengeance weapons. They were basically uh. these huge bombs that the Nazis would drop arbitrarily across the United Kingdom on what major population centers. And by this point in the war, these vengeance weapons had killed over 5,000 civilians. Damn. And at this exact moment, like this night, as Joe was walking towards the hangar, the Nazis had a stash of vengeance weapons aimed directly at London. That was going to be their next target. Ooh. And so the mission that Joe and his co-pilot Bud were going on, Operation Aphrodite, was going to be to go out and destroy those vengeance weapons to save London. Mm. And as nervous as Joe was about this mission, and he was it. really nervous, he was also very excited. He actually had volunteered for this mission when many other pilots had done everything they could to stay away from this mission. And on top of that, Joe actually had flown enough missions by this point in the war that he didn't need to fly anymore. He could just go home. But I don't know how he's able to fly with these massive balls that he has. There is not too many people, including myself, who would volunteer for a mission like this. I'd be like, mm -mm, get somebody else to do it. Instead, he volunteered for this mission. And the reason why Joe might have decided to do that has a lot to do with the family he was raised in. So Joe came oh. from a family that was very successful and accomplished. And his father really pushed Joe and his younger brother to be the very best at whatever they were doing and to be very competitive with each other. And so while Joe and his younger brother did love each other, they also had a pretty intense rivalry. And for a while, Joe's father obviously favored Joe. I mean, Joe was the favorite child and, you know, his father would always say, Joe's going to be the president someday. He's so talented. But after the attack on My Pearl Harbor the that thing. brought the United States into <laughs> World War II, both Joe and his younger brother joined the military. And pretty early on in the war, Joe's younger brother got an award for heroism. He had basically saved his wow. platoon of men and he won all these awards and he was all over the news. And pretty quickly after that, Joe felt like he fell out of favor with his dad, that his dad kind of looked at the younger brother as being the favorite child now. And so mm. Joe really started to feel insecure and wanted to prove himself really to his dad. And See, so the only thing about, um, let me rephrase this. 
The thing about making your siblings competitive like the way their father did, it can kind of backfire because like Mr. Bolin said, he kind of got insecure because he felt like his father was favoring the younger brother now. I, I really think that when it gets to that point, the father should come in, take both of the boys and say, I love you both equally. So there's no type of confusion. You have to clear that shit up in my opinion because it can grow into something very toxic between the two. But I've seen this happen in my family, like cousins and like, you know, other relatives, uh, other people's families. It's not always good. But when Operation Aphrodite came up, Joe volunteered for it really because he wanted to be a hero. He mm. wanted to show his dad that he too could do something huge and change the course of history. <laughs> And he would change the I course mean, of history, geez. but not in the way he expected. There's other ways to make a your dad proud. And so Joe continued to smoke a cigarette and hustled across the base towards the hangar. And as he did, he found himself kind of speeding up. Like he just wanted to get over there and get started. Joe's commanders had given him a special code he would call out over the radio if this mission was successful. It was spade flush. That's what he'd say over the radio. And so as Joe hustled towards the hangar, he imagined how incredible it was going to be to yell out spade flush over the radio. I mean, mm. it was only like 30 minutes away from that moment. This was a short mission. And so finally, Joe reached the hangar and he looked up to the sky one more time to make sure the weather looked solid because actually they had tried to launch Operation Aphrodite a couple of days earlier, but it had been canceled because of fog but Joe looked around and the weather looked good and so he knew it was gonna be a go so mm. he flipped a cigarette butt and stepped into the hangar I'm inside this hangar hell. was this massive big open space and in the center of the hangar on the floor was this huge plane called a b-24 liberator this was of course Joe's plane for the night Yeesh. And so Joe immediately began walking towards the plane to check it out now this particular type of plane was the type of plane Joe had been flying for the past three years I mean he'd flown many combat missions in this type of aircraft so he was very familiar with it but this particular b-24 was unlike any of the other b-24s Joe had ever flown hmm. in fact this aircraft was so unique it was unlike any aircraft that any pilot in the American military had ever flown why I mean, was this it was really a one of one and so as Joe walked around the outside of this plane he began to notice some of these unique modifications that the mechanics had made to this aircraft the most noticeable modification was actually the cockpit now normally the cockpit had all these windows basically all around it so the pilot could look in any direction and see what was going on but obviously they needed to be protected from the elements okay. but this b24 had all the glass removed except for one pane of glass basically right in front of where Joe would be staring, just like a single windshield. And so it's almost like it was a convertible aircraft where it was all open air in the cockpit. And the reason mm. for this change is because Joe and his co-pilot during the course of this top secret mission, Operation Aphrodite, they would have to jump out and parachute to the ground. And so what? having this all open, it would allow them to do that much easier. And then another big modification to the B-24 is the guns that were normally located on the outside of the aircraft were gone and they were replaced by broomsticks painted black to look like guns at a distance. But the uh. visible changes to this particular B-24 were nothing compared to the massive changes that were hidden inside this aircraft because the top secret part of Operation Aphrodite was really this particular plane. The plane was not really a plane. It was more like a huge flying bomb. The military's mechanics oh, basically ooh. hollowed out the entirety of this plane, removed everything inside of it that was not absolutely vital, and they replaced it with explosives. Oh! And tons of explosives. Like So I can see why this is a suicide mission, because if they start shooting at your plane, you could go up in flames. It makes me so uneasy to hear this because it feels like so many things has to go right in this mission because not only do you have to fly into enemy territory, but you have to essentially, I, I, I'm i assuming, jump out of the plane. And I don't know, he's going to probably explain, you know, in a few minutes, but I'm thinking that they're going to either drop the explosives or they're going to run the plane into whatever they're trying to destroy. I don't know, but... Either way, but jumping out of a plane that's filled with explosives would make anybody shit themselves. This is an unbelievable amount of explosives. <sighs> a few minutes later, at around 5.55 p.m., Joe and his co-pilot Bud, who by this point had come into the hangar, 
finished doing their exterior inspection of the aircraft, and then they climbed into the cockpit, with Joe taking a seat in the pilot's seat and Bud sitting in the co-pilot's seat. Mm. And even though the evening was cool, both men were visibly sweating. Once the pilots got the go-ahead <laughs> in the mission, Joe fired the first engine and then turned to look at the ground crew all around them, and he noticed all of them looked really, really serious. I mean, they obviously knew how intensely dangerous this mission really was. Y'all may not be fact, coming course, back. You know, the pilots might not make it home, and so they're looking up at these guys. Yeah, exactly. like, I'm sorry you have to do this. But Joe, you know, he looked out at these people and he sensed that was going on, and so he made a big show to wave and smile at them, to show confidence, like he knew what he was going to do, he's going to be fine. But in reality, Joe really was terrified. They were like, shit. <laughs> but that's... Was in your cheap protein powder? But that's well, like the definition of bravery, you know what I mean? In about 10 seconds, I'm gonna hold something up in front of the camera that our team has been working on for over a year. And it's finally ready to be revealed, and we know you're gonna love it. All right, drum roll please, here we go. And it's the Strange, Dark, and Mysterious delivered oh, in book format. That's dope. The official Mr. Ballin graphic novel. Our first book ever. In this just stunningly beautiful anthology I'm of surprised stories, he hasn't done are this full sooner. stories that are brand new and have never been covered anywhere else on any of our other channels. Mr. Ballin just keeps winning, man. Just keeps winning, bro. By 5.59 p.m., Joe had all four propellers spinning on the aircraft, and so he released the brake and began taxiing out to the runway. And as they bumped along, Joe and Bud became really aware of just how heavy this aircraft was from all the explosives. I mean, Jeez. every bump, this plane is lurching up and down and really creaking and making lots of noises. I mean, this was sketchy. Finally, Joe went Hell full yeah. speed ahead, and he and Joe went tearing down the runway, and at some point, the plane did get lift, and it took off into the air. And then just up ahead of him were six other planes that had just taken off moments before who were going to escort Joe and Bud to their target area. Once uh -huh. Joe got the plane to its cruising altitude, he and Bud kind of relaxed for a second and began preparing themselves for what was going to happen next. They had about 15 minutes of just kind of casual flying before the real work of this mission began. Mm. The vengeance weapons that Joe and Bud were going out to destroy as part of Operation Aphrodite were located about 120 miles south, just outside of this little town in the very northern tip of France. But destroying these weapons would not be as simple as just Joe and Bud flying over top and releasing all their explosives and flying back home. Uh. Because the Nazis had buried these vengeance weapons deep inside the hills in this town in northern France. Okay. And so regular bombs wouldn't touch these vengeance weapons. They had to do it a different way. And the way they were going to do it was Joe and Bud were going to fly their plane directly into the hills. And the way they would do this what? is they would fly their plane as close to the target area as possible at which point one of the other pilots that were in the escort planes would take remote control of the B-24 flying bomb. And then once they had remote control, Joe and Bud, who no longer needed to do anything, they would jump out and parachute to the ground. Oh. And then the pilot who was remotely flying this now vacant B-24 flying bomb, they would just set it on autopilot to crash into the hills. At around 6 wow. p.m., just as the English Channel came into view, Joe toggled a switch on his control panel and then after he did, he and Bud kind of held their breath for a second to see what would happen. And then a couple of seconds later, the plane kind of shuddered for a second and then leveled out. And then a call came over the radio from one of the pilots who were in the escort planes telling Joe and Bud that they had just successfully taken remote control of the B-24. So Shit. at this point, Joe and Bud I are no longer on on everything. Aircraft. They're just sitting inside of this flying bomb. Now, there were only two things left for Joe and Bud to do before they could bail out to safety. Jump they out. would need to arm the plane, so basically arm the explosives and make them ready to detonate. And then after that was done, they would need to call out over the radio, spade flush, the oh. code Joe was given, which would signal to everybody else that the plane was ready and Joe and Bud were jumping out. And so once Joe and Bud nodded to each other and kind of acknowledged that, okay, we're gonna do the last bit of this mission, Joe turned around in a seat and he looked at this control panel that was right behind him and on this panel was the arming switch. And so once mm. Joe flipped this, he and Bud would have a very short window of time to safely escape the aircraft. Imagine you arm it and you yell out the code word and you and your co-pilot jumps out, but as soon as you go to jump out, your fucking pants leg gets caught on the fucking plane. It's not funny, but I know if I was in this situation and how nervous I would be, that would probably happen to me. <laughs>
And so it was kind of like, you know, flip it, make the radio call and get the heck out of there. But mm. Joe and Bud had trained for this moment over and over and over again, so they were ready. And so eventually, Joe flipped the switch, grabbed his radio, and called out Spade Flush. What Joe and Bud could not have known when the mechanics were making all these modifications to this B-24 was that one of the mechanics accidentally crossed some wires in putting in all these explosives. Of and course. so just seconds after Joe had armed the explosives, they detonated. Oh! They supposed to, but they did. And so Joe and Bud were killed basically a fraction of a second. What? out spade flush. But it would turn out the catastrophic failure of Operation Aphrodite had no impact on World War II. In fact, Operation Aphrodite should never have happened in the first place. What? It was totally unnecessary. What Joe and Bud and the rest of the American military didn't know at the time was five weeks earlier, the British Royal Air Force dropped a whole bunch of ground penetrating bombs all across those hills in Northern France, and they destroyed all of the vengeance weapons. So when Joe and Bud took off on this doomed mission, they didn't know there this. was no threat to London, none. But that is not the big reveal in this story because Operation Aphrodite changed the course of American history in a really specific and really enormous way. So, so wait, before he gets into that, you're telling me that the reason that the plane exploded is because some dude crisscrossed some wires and fucked everybody in that plane? See, I knew that everything had to be damn near perfect for this mission to like go down and be successful. And turns out, they didn't even need to do it. How did they not know that those vengeance weapons were already dealt with, man? I mean, damn, bro. So as soon as he yelled a cold word, boom! What irks me is that they got killed by somebody else's incompetence. Because Joe, whose full name was Joseph P. Kennedy Jr., was a member of the very famous Kennedy family, a big-time political really? family in America. And at the time, the Kennedys were all saying, Joseph is going to be the next president of the United States. And uh. everybody believed it. He was going to be the guy. But then, of course, Operation Aphrodite changed all of that because Joseph was killed. And so the oh. war would end about a year later. And when it did, Joseph's younger brother, John, John F. Kennedy, F oh, who won that award for heroism and got a Purple Heart early on in the war. And he kind of became a war hero, which prompted Joe to volunteer for Operation Aphrodite. Yeah, John would begin his unbelievable political rise. And by 1960, oh, John F. Kennedy, JFK, would become the 35th president of the United States, even though he wasn't supposed to. He was the second choice. It should have been Joe. Damn. Then we all know what happened to him. Actually, a good As I president. mentioned earlier, I am now going to go live on YouTube. Wow. Um, that looks like the end of it, but it's just unfortunate, though. Um, I hate the way that that ended <laughs> because it, it, listen, they didn't even need to do this mission. They had no business doing this mission. I get why they felt like they needed to, but they didn't have the information, you know, beforehand to understand that, okay, these, these weapons are already like dealt with. We don't need to do this suicide mission where everything has to go perfect. But, you know, it would have been understandable if like, okay, they were flying this plane and, you know, somebody shot at their plane and exploded or like, you know, something happened and like they parachuted and like they ended up getting shot at and they died that way. No, some knucklehead messed up the wiring in the plane, which caused them to explode. That guy had to feel like dog shit after that, bro. But this was an interesting story though. Um, let me know what you guys think of this video. Make sure you give Mr. Ballin your support. Um, and if you enjoyed my reaction, Make sure you give me a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. And I'll be back with some more reactions. Peace!